if I say the words declutter and books in the same sentence, some of you gasp in horror. So books are just paper and ink. You may say, I'm getting rid of this book over my dead body, but that is because of the stories that we're telling ourselves. That is because of our feelings and our thoughts towards those books. And those are incredibly important. But I do want you to make the distinction between a book that you're attached to and a book that you are not attached to, a book that is just paper and ink. You are listening to the Decluttering Club podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Mueller, and it's my mission to equip women to declutter their homes, their time, and their lives so that they have energy for what matters most. Welcome to Decluttering Club podcast, episode number 78. We're going there. We're going there today, you guys. We're going to talk about decluttering books. Was there a collective gasp when I said books? But you knew we had to get there sooner or later, didn't you? And the truth is the books are just like any other item in our home. There's nothing like inherently special about books, even if you are a book lover. We can still apply these principles to books. And as always, I want you to be intentional with your choices. It is possible, my friends, to have too many books. And it's also possible even for you. Yes, you. It is possible to let go of books if you want to. So I'm going to talk through what that could look like for you and some things that you can use to make these decisions. First of all, Books are not inherently exempt from decluttering. Now, of course, you don't have to get rid of any books if you don't want to. This is how we roll. It's about less stuff, more life. It's not about minimalism. It is not about some kind of arbitrary rules. I'm not going to tell you this is the number of books that you should have. For some of you, that number is zero. For some of you, that number is probably, I don't know, 10,000. And maybe you're somewhere in between. It's not my job to tell you how many books. It is my job to help you decide what is the right answer for you and should you keep any particular book or not. I want to give you the tools so that you can figure that out. Before we dive into how you could theoretically decide to let go of a book, I want to offer you the idea that books are not some kind of special exempt category when it comes to our things. We may love them. We may feel very, very attached to them. But at the end of the day, they're just paper and ink. Every book that you have ever had is paper and ink, or maybe it's digital. Paper and ink. And so when you think about it like that, it kind of neutralizes it. And that's really what we want to do here. We want to neutralize books when we are trying to make some decisions. Because again, if I say the words declutter and books in the same sentence, some of you gasp in horror and completely feel triggered. And we don't want to do that. So books are just paper and ink. Now, we may feel a special attachment. We may have a fondness. We may say, I'm getting rid of this book over my dead body. But that is because of the stories that we're telling ourselves. That is because of our feelings and our thoughts towards those books. And those are incredibly important. I'm not saying that they're not important. But I do want you to make the distinction between a book that you're attached to and a book that you are not attached to, a book that is just paper and ink. It is okay to get rid of paper and ink. And when we can kind of speak very objectively about books, then it will help us to let them go. Because even if you do not like a book, let's say you have a book that you really don't like at all, you think it's a horrible book, you might still be telling yourself, but it's wrong to get rid of books. So I want you to then go to the place of this is just paper and ink, and I'm letting it go. When we are dealing with books, especially if you are a book lover, it is really, really helpful to develop a set of constraints. And if you've done our Organize Like a Boss Challenge, you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, I'm just going to give you like a little primer here, a little quick brief. We want to develop some constraints because when we have constraints around books, then it helps us to make decisions ahead of time. So the the constraints are like a set of rules that you decide for yourself. Not rules that I decide, not rules that anybody else decides, but what are the rules that you want to follow? And it's really guidelines, so guidelines that you want to follow when it comes to keeping or letting go of books. And there's so many ways to slice this. I'm going to give you a couple that I tend to use when I am looking at books. And I, by the way, I am a book lover. 
I love books. I will have anywhere between one and, I don't know, seven or eight books going at a time. Some of them are digital. Some of them are physical. I reread books. I buy books. I'm a book lover. So I really, really can relate with this struggle. Here are some of the constraints that I have used because I have let go of so many books throughout the years. The first one that I let go of, any book that does not align with my values, any book that I look at it, or maybe I've read it, or I read the back cover, and I'm like, you know what? This doesn't work for me. Like, I actually object to this book. And there have been times, it's a pretty pretty small number, but there have been times when I bought a book, it was recommended, I thought it was a good idea, and then I got partway into it, and I was like, you know what? This book is no good. I, I don't support this book, and not only do I not support this book, I really don't even want to pass this book on to anyone else because I object to this book. This book, I find this book offensive. And so in that case, I will just recycle the book. I won't even pass it on because I'm like, if it conflicts with my values, then I probably don't want to share this. I don't want it to be out into the world. And this is just sort of my way of saying this is not something that I can support. So that's the first category. Anything that you that does not align with your values, you probably don't want to keep it. It doesn't belong in your house. Your space is very, very precious. And so that is the easiest kind of book to get rid of, any book that does not align with your values. The second kind of book that I always or almost always get rid of is any book that is not in decent condition. It doesn't have to be in pristine condition for me to keep it. But if it is falling apart, if it's got mold in it, or maybe you have an issue with like, there's certain kinds of insects that like to eat books, any book in that condition, I am not going to keep it. It's impossible to read, first of all. At one point, I found some books that my mother had saved from when I was a kid. And I loved those books. They were very near and dear to my heart. But you know what? They were missing pages. And you can't read that book if it's missing pages. In fact, you're going to be very frustrated if you go to read this book and then you get to page 122 and it's missing. That's not cool. So those are the kinds of books that I will also recycle. You may make an exception, of course, if you have a rare book. If there's a book that's a first edition or whatever, if it's signed and it's missing pages or maybe it has some some mold damage or mildew, you might want to take it and have it be professionally restored. I'm not talking about that kind of thing. I'm just talking about your everyday run-of-the-mill books that are not in good shape. They're not. You're not going to be able to reread them or they might even, like if it's a mildew issue or an insect issue, it might spread to your other books. Do not let that kind of book stay in your collection, at least without some remediation. Very important, especially if you value your books. Now it gets a little bit harder, right? Now it gets a little bit more individual as to what kinds of books you keep and which ones you let go of. For me, what I decided to do is I decided to put a constraint and say, I'm going to keep books that I can honestly see myself reading again. Do I think I might want to read this book again? And if it's even a maybe, I am going to keep it. That is me. I have room in my house and I'm a reader. And so I'm happy to err on the side of, I guess, what I would say caution in terms of if it's a maybe, I will keep it. If it's like, I really don't see myself reading this again, then I'm going to be happy to pass this book on. And that is the beautiful thing about books is that you can spread so much joy by passing them on. And how fun and exciting is it to give books away? And we're going to get to that in a minute. But again, so for me, I use this rule of thumb. Do I see myself reading it again? I have allowed myself to be very, what would you say, conservative and allow a lot of leeway. You might say, I only have this much room for books. I want to be bringing new books in the door. So I'm going to be a little more strict with this rule. And I'm going to say, do I see myself rereading this book again in during this year or, or some other kind of tests like that? You can narrow or widen that rule to fit your storage needs. That is a really, really useful constraint that you can apply. What are some other constraints? For me, other ways that I have decided to keep or let go of books, I do have some books that I loved reading as a kid and I read them to my kids. 
and it's a very small quantity. It's probably under 20 books, but I do have a very small set of books that I'm not going to be reading them again anytime soon, but they are special to me and they do have a place in my house. And these are mostly like children's books. So I have decided to keep them. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have grandkids someday. I hope, Lord willing, that I will, but that's not why I'm keeping them. I am not keeping them because I'm like, when I have grandkids, I'm going to read these books. That's not really it. I'm just keeping these books this particular set of books because I feel like it's important to me and they have a special place in my heart. And again, I have the room and I'm going to be honest with the fact that I'm probably not going to read these books again, but it's important to me to keep them. Other ways that you can go about doing this process, you could decide by category. So for me, I, I spent a lot of time collecting gardening books at one point, and I'm still super into gardening. I love gardening. I do still have some gardening books, but I went through a period where I was like, I'm not reading the gardening books the, the way that I used to 20 years ago. I used to like pour over these books. Now, not so much. And they were just kind of taking up space in my house on my bookshelf. And I also kind of thought, I kind of feel bad when I look at these books because I'm putting restrictions on myself. And I'm saying things like, I should be reading these books and I really should be doing something with these books. And I didn't like that. So I actually went through and I got rid of all of the gardening and plant books that I had at that time. I think maybe I kept one. That was my very favorite. But I did get rid of a lot of gardening books because I was like, I don't like feeling guilty. And so I'm going to let these things go. Someone else can enjoy them. A lot of them I had actually gotten from a book, a used book sale to begin with. So it's kind of fun that I was able to take them back to a library donation and someone else would enjoy them. So books that like, like that kind of thing, books that either you're not using or they're from a, a, a previous season of your life. That can be a great category of books to let go of. And again, maybe you decide to keep your one or two or your three favorites, and then you let the rest of them go. This kind of activity will actually give you a tremendous sense of freedom after you let them go. Once they are gone from your house, it really will. And it's really, really interesting. There's like relief that happens after you have completely executed the task. It's really interesting. Then the other thing that I like to do is I'm really only going to keep nonfiction books because those are the ones that I find myself reading over and over and over again. And if it's a novel or something like that, and again, I do reserve, maybe I have 10 novels that I would want to reread and I do, but most of those I'm like, I'm probably going to want to either read a different story or if I really want to get it again, I can get it from the library. The library is the most amazing thing ever, in my opinion, and I love getting stories out of the library. So that has allowed me the freedom to say, I don't need to keep this novel because the library has it. It's available pretty much at any time. And when was the last time you were without reading material? For me, that the answer to that question has been absolutely never. I have never been at a loss for something to read. So if the library doesn't have it, I could put it on a wait list or maybe I just read something else. It's never turned out to be a problem. So for me, again, I've just decided I really don't keep fiction books. And those are things that I will buy but I'm going to pass them on when I'm done with them. And I know a lot of you really love the, the little free libraries. That is such a great way to get rid of books, to, to pass on books and let them brighten someone else's day. Such a wonderful thing. Other ways that you can let go and declutter books, library book sales, amazing way to let go of books. There are some people that will go to the library book sale and they will load up. And how fun is that? So again, only books that are in good condition. We don't want to be offloading our junk onto the library book sale, then the library volunteers have to deal with all that. But if you have books in good condition, that's an amazing way to pass on those books and let someone else enjoy them. You can also give them to friends. You can post them on Facebook for free. You could sell them. There are places that will buy your books for you. You're not going to get very much from those. So I really encourage you not to spend too much time trying to sell them unless it's some kind of a unique type of a book. But those are wonderful ways to declutter books. Books. The last thing I want to leave you with is that if you are a book lover and if you've really struggled to declutter books in the past, this might be hard for you. This might be challenging, especially if you've never intentionally decluttered a book. Just because it's hard doesn't mean it's wrong. 
doesn't mean it's the wrong thing for you to do. Sometimes the most important things for us to do are the ones that are really hard. And so I want you to know that and I want you to be okay with that. If you feel a little twinge of, of sadness or, or whatever's coming up for you, just sit with that and, and be okay with that and realize that this is hard and that's okay. We can free up so much space when we do declutter books and we want with books as with everything else. We want to be intentional with what we keep in our homes. Our space, our time, our energy is just too precious to do anything else. So I encourage you, spend some time decluttering those books. I'll see you next week, everyone. That's all we have for you today. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review. It would really help us to get the word out. And if you'd like to continue your decluttering journey with us, find us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube at Decluttering Club or on our website at thedeclutteringclub.com.